Corruption is not only a factor in the mob. Corruption and betrayal exist in every layer of society, every element of society. We see it in government. Welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is blessed on this end. Praise God for that. Today is Mob Movie Monday. We got a movie called Miller's Crossing, something I think you're going to enjoy. Uh, but before we do get into that, I want to thank everyone. We just surpassed 800,000 subscribers. We did it in a relatively short period of time. And that's thanks to all of you that enjoy the content, that to continue to tune in. We appreciate it very much. Uh, for those of you that haven't subscribed, we ask you to do that. It motivates us, encourages us to give you the best possible content that we can. We work hard at it. And, uh, you know, we want not only tell stories, but we want to give a, a takeaway from these stories. And that's how we try to design all of these things. So thank you very much. We appreciate the loyalty. We're on a march now for a million. Who knows when that'll take place. But if it does, it's thanks to all of you. MichaelFrancis.com my crew, my inner circle, growing in leaps and bounds, and people are just enjoying it and getting a lot out of it. I said this before, I wish I can show you some of the remarks and testimonials that we get from people that are in the inner circle and in the crew. MichaelFrancis.com, I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed, you'll get a lot out of it. So, today's movie, Miller's Crossing. You know, it's, it's a movie that was released in 1990, and uh, I never saw it. For some reason, I heard about it quite a bit, but I just never sat down and watched it. I don't know why. Sometimes, you know, you just don't do that. But I did a couple of days ago. Glad I did. And uh, I'm ready for this review. And, you know, uh, this is one of those movies. It was written and directed and produced by the Coen brothers. Very talented group of writers and a director. Very talented. They've done a number of things in the past. And it's, uh, it was also known to be in the top 100 movies of all times. I don't know if I get that, but, you know, they're saying it for a reason. A lot of people must have enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, artistically, it was done really well. But, you know, it's one of those movies that I can't really find a redeeming character in. And I'll get into that. You know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to tell you the whole story for those of you who haven't seen it. And when I review a movie, I really don't do that. I'm not trying to tell you the whole story. You watch the movie for that. But I'm going to talk about some of the characters. I'm going to talk about what might be realistic, what may not be realistic. I'm going to emphasize a couple of scenes that I thought were done well that caught my eye. And we'll take it from there. But, you know, another crazy thing about this movie, politicians and law enforcement are on the take. Now... I want to point this out. In just about every mob movie from the beginning of time, we always see that there's politicians and law enforcement that are some way corrupt working with the mob. You know, we've seen it with Al Capone, true. That city, you know, Chicago is a corrupt city. We see it in other cities. I'm not going to mention them all. Certainly happened in New York. Lucky Luciano was involved. Frank Costello, heavily involved with politicians during his day. In my day, I was involved and I saw some of my higher ups. They were involved with politicians too. We got involved in fundraisers. We helped them get elected. And in return, we got favors. I was able to get licensing for my uh, wholesale gasoline business through uh, political connections that I had. And I paid for it. So this is a part of life. It's a fact of history. You know, the mob and people on the street have had a lot to do with politics. And in many times, they had a lot of influence in law enforcement. Sometimes they were paid off. And sometimes law enforcement officers did our bidding. Now, again, I want to make this clear. That doesn't say that everyone's corrupt. The greater percentage of law enforcement are good, honest people that take an oath to defend and protect, and they do their job. And I am uh, very supportive of law enforcement at this stage of my life. I have many friends in law enforcement, so I'm not, you know, casting a wide net on everybody. I'm only saying that, you know, throughout history, people are corrupt. And you're going to see that uh, in this film, in Miller's Crossing. You know, it shouldn't surprise anybody. You know, I think sometimes people think that the mob, every day of their life, they were, you know, out there doing horrible things. It's not true. 
we hear a lot of that online with some of these YouTubers. You know, sometimes we see it in a movie. Of course, a movie is condensed into 90 minutes, but that's not always true. And corruption is not only a factor in the mob. Corruption and betrayal exists in every layer of society, every element of society. We see it in government. I'm writing a book, a mafia democracy. I'm gonna point certain things out. You see it already. If you're paying attention, you see it all the time. We see it in business. We see it in Wall Street. We see it in families. We see it sometimes in the church. Yes, we see it in the church because we're all human. And because we, you know, we might be part of a church, we might be part of a government, or we might be you know, watching people's money on Wall Street, it doesn't mean that we always do the right thing. There are certain people that are subject to corruption and they go for it. And it's going to happen. It's been happening since the beginning of time and it'll happen till the end of time because we live in a fallen world. And that's just the reality of it. So it's not something that only uh, happens with the mob. And we're going to see that in Miller's Crossing. So uh, let's get into the film a little bit. And let me give you a kind of the plot, what, what this all centers around. There's two main factors in this film. And one of them is the Irish mob. The other one is the Italian mob. The Irish mob is run by a guy by the name of Leo. He happens to be a, a, a political boss and a very powerful guy in this city. And by the way, it's a fictional city. Miller's Crossing, I think it's somewhere outside of New Orleans, but New Miller's Crossing is a place where something significant in the film takes place, and I'll get to that. But it's fictional. It's not any real city. And this is a fictionalized story, by the way. So Leo is the political boss. He's an Irish guy, very powerful guy. He controls the city, and he's also got his own little mob. Then you got Casper. Casper is the mob guy. Now, it's not Cosa Nostra at this point. Oh, by the way, it takes place during Prohibition, back in the 20s. So there's no Cosa Nostra at that point. You got Italian guys that run their own mob on the street. And uh, he plays this uh, fellow by the name of John Polito, uh, who's an actor that, you know, is fairly well known. He does a lot of stuff. And uh, he's very colorful, very animated, got a loud, deep voice. And uh, he's not the typical mob boss, at least not the ones that I knew and the ones that we normally see. He's very loud. He's very animated. He's in your face type of guy. And, uh, you know, but he's a very colorful character. Then you have Tom, who's played by Gabriel Byrne, plays a brilliant role. And he's sort of Leo, uh, played by Albert Finney, by the way. You know, every time I think of Albert Finney, I think of uh, Daddy Warbucks in Little Orphan Annie. Brilliant role there, too. But he was great in this film. Played a great tough guy. And Tom, Gabriel Byrne, is his right-hand man. So he's an Irish guy, too. So here's what the whole plot or the whole movie is about. There is a, a, book, a bookmaker, bookie, who uh, by the name of Bernie, played by John Turturro, excellent job he did, and uh, somehow he pulled a fast one, or he's scamming Casper. So the opening scene is Casper is sitting down with Leo because Bernie belongs to Leo, he's part of his crew, and he's telling Leo, I want to kill Bernie. This guy robbed me, he's, you know, he's scamming me, and I want to kill him. And he wants Leo to give him permission to do it. Uh, Leo says, no, he won't do it. And Casper is, you know, giving him his reasons why, and uh, Leo says no. Now we find out that Leo says no because Leo happens to be dating Bernie's sister, Verna, played by Marsha Gay Haddon. She also did a great job. So Casper gets upset. He leaves the office. He jumps up. He's in Leo's face. Leo's not bothered by it. Tom, by the way, is standing there listening to this whole thing. And Casper leaves. He's got his guy with him, a guy by the name of Dane. Very, very upset. He walks out. Tom, at that point, you know, tells Leo, what are you doing? You know, is it worth going to war with this guy? Who the heck is this Bernie? Give him up. But we find out again, Leo is going out with Verna, and uh, he's not going to allow that to happen. So the whole movie is about killing this guy, Bernie. Casper wants him killed. Leo don't want him killed. Tom is kind of in the middle. Now, I got to tell you this. This movie is about, there's nothing, there's no character that's redeemable in this movie. It's about betrayal, it's about corruption, and that's all you see. Now, the mob life isn't only about that. The street life isn't only about that. It does occur, but there is loyalty to a degree. There is integrity to a degree. I'm not defending a life, I'm just telling you how it is. It's not total betrayal, it's not total corruption, not total disloyalty but you see it a lot in this movie. Tom, his whole role in this 
is really he gets caught between Casper and Leo, and it's all over Bernie. And this guy, Tom, I got to tell you this, he gets beat up by everybody. He gets beat up by Leo. He gets beat up by Casper. He gets even smacked by Bernie, his girlfriend. He gets beat up by, he gets beat up by everybody. I never saw a guy in a film get beat up so much. And he goes down, he fell down two flights of stairs, he gets up and he goes about his business. Unbelievable. But the guy's always getting beat up. So what happens throughout the film, I'm gonna give you some scenes that I thought were, uh, were kind of catchy, that I really enjoyed. You know, one scene was really when Leo was sitting there with the mayor of that town, and the police chief, or a high up in the police, and you can see that he's calling his shots. And it was like that back in that day, back in the 20s, Capone. He had a lot of influence, you know, they really did. And even some of the guys in the Irish mob, they controlled a lot of the politicians and a lot of law enforcement, and they were paying them. They were on the payroll. That's how it went. Well, in this movie, Leo controls the politicians in that town. And there's a scene when that, you know, becomes very, very obvious there. Another scene where, where the cops are working over an Italian guy, you know, the cops, are the, the cops are the real mob guys in this film. I mean, they're working over everybody. They're blowing up buildings. They're doing everything. They're the, they're the tough guys in this film. One of the scenes I really liked is um, Casper now, he's upset with Leo. He wants to get rid of Leo. That's it. Wants him out. So you see a scene where Leo is in his room and he's listening to the Irish song, Danny Boy, a famous Irish song. And he's in his bedroom and he's relaxing on his bed and he's got a, you know, his, his pajamas on. And we see two guys come into his house. They kill somebody downstairs, might have been his bodyguard, I don't know. And now they're going up to get Leo. Well, Leo somehow spots them coming into the room. He's got a gun under his bed. He kills these two guys. You know, he's a tough guy, Leo. He kills these two guys. Then he goes out, the, he's on the second story, he goes out of his uh, window, goes down, he's got a machine gun in his hand, and he starts shooting other guys that were there, starts shooting guys in the car, but the way the scene, the cinematography was beautiful in that scene, the way they did it, the, the Coen brothers, they're, they're great in this kind of stylistic type of film like that. But uh, it was really a great scene. You know, another scene is when um, Casper calls to, for Tom, who again is uh, one of Leo's right-hand men, and Casper calls him, and they're in a meeting, and he offers him money to try to have Tom convince Leo to kill Bernie. He really wants his Bernie out, right? Tom says no. He says, let me think about it. Casper takes that as kind of an insult. He walks out of the room. This guy, Dane, a few other guys come in. What do they do? They work over Tom. Again, he gets his, his beaten again. And uh, they work him over. They kind of convince him to go to Leo, to convince Leo to kill Bernie. Tom is talking to Leo. Leo's still not budging. And then Tom reveals something that really gets Leo upset. He says, listen, you think that Verna is with you because she loves you. That's not true. Verna was with me the other night. Tom was having an affair with Verna. He says, was with me the other night. And uh, she's just trying to protect her brother. That's why she's with you. When Leo hears this, he gets crazy. He gives Tom a beating. I mean, a real beating. He's punching him all over the place. He knocks him down one flight of stairs. And this is public. A lot of people are out. And then he knocks him down another flight of probably 25 steps. Tom is down on the floor. And uh, that's the end of it. Leo doesn't want to see Tom anymore. Done, right? Tom is between Casper and Leo, back and forth. He's just trying to save himself. He doesn't know what to do at this point. Well, he goes back to Casper and he agrees to have Bernie killed. So now they find Bernie, John Totoro, and we see two of Casper's guys, Tom and Bernie, they're in a car and they're driving to Miller's Crossing. They get to Miller's Crossing, Tom and Bernie get out of the car, Tom's got a gun, he's walking Bernie into Miller's Crossing, it's a beautiful forest setting, and all the while John Totoro, Bernie, is pleading for his life. And Tom is walking with the gun, and, and Totoro is pleading, please don't kill me. It's a beautiful scene, the way he pled. And uh, finally, you get to the spot where Tom is going to kill him. He's got the gun pointed at him. Totoro is pleading, begging for his life. He looks at Tom. He says, dig deep into your heart. Tom fires. We think he's dead. He's not. He fires into the air, onto the ground. He doesn't kill Bernie. He tells Bernie, go, get out of here, run away. Bernie picks up, runs through Miller's Crossing. We don't see him again for that, at that point, right? Tom goes back to the car. The mistake that was made here, the two guys that drove them, they didn't go into the woods to see if Bernie was actually dead. They took Tom's word for it. Yeah, I killed him. They heard the gunshot. That was it. So they all get back in the car. They go. Everybody believes Bernie's dead. 
So as it turns out, everybody believes now that uh, Bernie's dead. Leo is on the run. He's in hiding. And then Bernie suddenly appears to Tom. And what does he do? He extorts him. He says, look, everybody believes that I'm dead. If I happen to reappear, Casper's going to kill you. I'm supposed to be dead. So what do I want from you? I want you to go and kill Casper so I don't have to worry about it. So now, you know, <laughs> no good deed goes un unpunished, right? So now Tom has to worry about Bernie reappearing. And if that happens, then Casper is going to kill Tom. So now if Tom is in the middle of this again, what does he do? Dane, who is Casper's right-hand man, starts to figure that something is wrong. So what does he do? He wants to go back into the forest to make sure that Bernie is actually dead because he finds out that may not be the case, that Bernie is not really dead. So now Dane suspects that. He gets a hold of Tom with two other guys. They go back to Miller's Crossing and they're looking for Bernie's body. Well, as it turns out, initially they don't see it. Dane is standing over Tom. He's going to kill him. And then the other two guys who we don't see, all of a sudden, they, we hear a disturbance from them. They walk over, uh, Tom and, and Dane do, and they see a body lying there. The face is all messed up from whatever. Uh, they can't make out who it is, but they think it's Bernie, right? So now Tom's off the hook. Bernie's really dead. That's what they think. So now they go back. Tom is sitting in the office with um, Casper, and Casper is complaining. He says, you know what? It's not only Bernie that was robbing me and scamming me. It was somebody else. It was my own people. There's a guy by the name of Mink who is very friendly with Dane, and they find out that maybe Mink was the guy that was also scamming him. So Tom now is trying to figure this out, how he can come out of all of this. He's telling Casper that, yeah, uh, it was Mink. Bernie really is dead, but it was Mink, and it was Dane. He's blaming Dane because Tom doesn't trust Dane anymore. And he puts it in Casper's head that Dane's the guy. Again, you see this betrayal everywhere? You know, who's betraying who? Who's selling out who? This is, that's all through the movie. So now Dane comes in, and Dane is angry, and he tells Casper, with Tom sitting there, Bernie's still alive, this guy is lying, and Casper has to make a choice. Does he believe Tom or does he believe Dane? Well, Casper gets up and makes a decision. He believes Tom. So he hits Dane in the back of the head with something. Dane goes down, takes a gun, and Casper shoots him in the head. Dane is gone. So now Tom eliminated that problem. So now what does he have to do? He sees Bernie again later on. And this time he tells Bernie, hey, I got nothing to lose. I don't care. You can do whatever the heck you want at this point. He sets up a situation where Bernie is going to meet Casper and whoever sees who first is going to get killed. That's how it's going to go. So he sets up that situation. Bernie is waiting for somebody, doesn't know it's Casper. Casper comes up, doesn't know he's going to meet Bernie. And what happens? Bernie sees Casper, shoots and kills him. And now what happens? is that Tom comes into that place, it was, I think, at Tom's house, and sees Bernie standing over Casper, Casper's dead. So now Tom looks at him and says, listen, you're gonna be in trouble here. You don't wanna be the one responsible for uh, Casper's death. So give me the gun. We're gonna blame this on Dane. Now Dane's already dead, but Bernie doesn't know this. Tom is tricking him. So Bernie does give him the gun. And what happens? Tom gets up and said, we can't blame this on Dane because Dane is dead already. And uh, now we got Bernie begging for his life again. And he's begging the same way he did at Miller's Crossing, but what happens? Uh, he looks at Tom and he says, Tom, dig deep into your heart. And Tom says, I don't have a heart. Boom, and he kills Bernie. That's it. So now we got rid of Bernie, we got rid of Casper, we got rid of Dane. All of Tom's enemies are basically gone. The only one he has to contend with now is Leo. Next scene, we see Leo and Verna and Tom at the gravesite for Bernie. They're the only three people there. Bernie wasn't a popular guy. After the, uh, the priest is there, reads him his rights or whatever, or does whatever he does at the gravesite, Verna walks away. She don't want any part of the two of them. She's gone. She makes some remark at Tom. She leaves. And now Leo and Tom are speaking, and Leo says, Tom, come back to me. Work for me again. Be my guy again. Tom basically tells you, I want no part of it, I'm out. Leo, you can see, is angry, turns around, walks away, camera freezes on Tom. That's the end of it, end of the movie. Again, this movie is about betrayal, it's about corruption, it's about who's robbing who, it's about who's selling out who, and I didn't find any redeeming characters. I mean, Tom, you may be intrigued by his character, but you didn't really like him. I mean, he's sleeping with his friends, 
girl. Uh, he's betraying Casper. He's betraying Bernie. He's betraying Leo. You can say, well, he was put in a situation, whatever. I guess, you know, if you had to say anybody was redeemable, it might have been Leo. Leo was in love with Werner, and for that, wanted to save Bernie's life. You know, I don't know. But he was a corrupt guy also. You know, he was a mob guy, and he was also a corrupt politician. So who knows? Casper, mob guy. There was no redeemable qualities in just about anybody in this film. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. You know, it's, uh, it's something I think you should watch. Like I said, they said it was, uh, you know, in the top 100 films. So it's something you might enjoy. Miller's Crossing, you know, take a look at it. Tell me what you think. Love to read your comments. Always do. So that's it for today. But, you know, what is the bottom line on this film? Bottom line is you got to play it straight. You get involved in this kind of stuff on the street, you know, it, it, it's going to go bad. This is what I tell young people all the time. And in life, you're going to be around situations where you have to make a choice. Do I get involved in a corrupt situation? Do I get involved in betrayal? You have to make a choice and stand up for yourself and do what you think is right. And that's the bottom line, no matter what. In this film, nobody was doing the right thing as far as I'm concerned. So that's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. I hope you're getting your exercise, eating properly. You gotta watch your health. It's important, especially after this whole pandemic. God bless you, and I really do mean that. And yes, I will see you next time. Thank you.